Sometimes the things you're going to do in life, people won't know who you are. But what God has put on your heart is going to open room for you. Your calling is going to be that gift that is going to open for you doors in places that you've not been. Welcome back to the podcast. Welcome to For His Glory podcast. If it's your first time, welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber listener, I'm delighted to have you. If you've just come across my videos, my name is Faith. I'm a mom of two. I'm a scientist, biotechnologist by profession, but I'm a girl who loves Jesus. So I started For His Glory podcast to share more about Jesus and make his name known. In this episode, I'm going to share with you an encouragement. This month has been about encouraging you and helping you thrive in your day-to-day -day life. Without further ado, let's get right into this episode. Before I start an episode, I will say a prayer. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for today. I thank you so much for the gift of life. I thank you so much for the ability to share your word. I come before you this morning and I ask you to speak through me. May you articulate the word that you put on my heart to share to the best of my ability. And may I decrease, may you increase. Holy Spirit, I welcome you in each and everyone's heart who is watching this video. May you help them understand this word because you're the teacher who teaches us all things. May you help us move in alignment to your will. May you encourage us, may you comfort us, may you show yourself strong in our lives. I welcome you and I give you praise. In Jesus' name, I do pray and believe. Amen. So when you go into 1 Samuel chapter 17, we see that Israel has an eminent enemy that they need to defeat. This enemy is a Philistine. He's recorded to be over nine feet tall and huge. And Saul is perplexed, wondering, how are we going to be able to defeat this Philistine? But David comes out and says, I'll do it. What struck me when I was studying this chapter was that David comes in, Saul offers him his armor. He's like, okay, since you've decided to be the man at the front, put on my armor. David tries on the armor and is like, you know what? Ah, this is so heavy. I've not practiced in it and I don't feel comfortable wearing it. I'll go as I am. At the back of my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I think Saul believed that David would die this day because David doesn't go with anything. You only have a sling, a few stones and himself and also the word and the covenant he believed over his life. He was already anointed to be king and now he's facing a battle to kill a man who is jeopardizing the Israelites, who is standing to defame the name of Israel, the name of the Most High God. So David had God with him to fight this battle. David had said that when he kills Goliath, he will not only cut off his head, but he will also take all his swords, all his armory, and take it as a sign of victory. And I'm thinking also, Goliath was like, who is this short dude coming to show me that he can do anything. But as the Spirit of God was with David, David defeated Goliath. When Goliath is down, David cuts off his head, takes his swords and runs and takes his swords into his tent. David kills Goliath without Saul knowing who David was. He didn't even know that David was the son of Jesse. After Saul learns about David killing Goliath, he asks his commander, Whose son is this? And the commander of the army, whose name was Abner, says, I don't even know whose son is. But after David had killed Goliath, he goes in to meet Saul and he tells Saul, I am the son of your servant, Jesse of Bethlehem. This can also be a podcast on its own. Sometimes the things you're going to do in life, people won't know who you are. But what God has put on your heart is going to open room for you. This confirms that many of the times the things you're going to do are going to be things that people won't know you for. But because you've been anointed by God, that anointing is going to open for you doors in which you're going to move in. That anointing is going to speak before you can speak. God is going to vindicate you before anyone else can vindicate you. God is going to validate your work before anyone else can validate your work. So do not look at the outside environment. Do not look at what people are saying about you. Do not look at who knows me. Do not look at which door am I entering in. Do not look at anything outside besides the calling that God has put on your life. 
your calling is going to be that gift that is going to open for you doors in places that you've not been. I've seen this in my own life. If I tell you where I come from, if I tell you which family I come from, if I tell you that at some point in my life my parents had to struggle to find my tuition, some days I'd be chased from school because my parents didn't have the money to pay the school fees. But the things that God has helped me achieve in my life have not been in my own power. They've not been in my own might, but they've been because of the calling he put over my life. They've been because of that power of the living God that I serve. So this is an encouragement to someone out there who feels that your life is not going the way it should go, who feels you're stuck, who feels that the battle before you is bigger than anything else that you can fight. Fight the good fight. Believe in the God who has called you to be who you are. Believe in the God who has helped you achieve the success you've achieved to get to this level. If you're to look back at your own life, there have been so many battles that you've won. Not in your own power, not in your own might, but by the power of the living God who lives in you. The breath of God that is in you has enabled you achieve the success you've achieved. The battles before you are there to test your belief in God. The battles before you are there to test if you could look at only God, the author and the finisher of your faith. Do not sway, do not doubt, do not think otherwise, but think that if God has carried me to where I am right now, what is this battle before me? What is this battle that is defying the God who I serve? What is the situation in my life that is defying the almighty God? So when you're coming at this battle, speak these words and say you come to this battle with God, with him, because the battle does not belong to you. The battle belongs to God. The Bible says that be still and know that I'm God. Being still means that you surrender. Do not think left, do not think right. Stand and watch God fight for you. The promises of God for your life are yes and amen. It might be a diagnosis you have. It might be a loss of a job. It might be a loss of a relationship. It might be divorce. But know the word of God amidst what you're going through God has a plan for he knows the plan he has for your life plans to prosper you and not to bring you disaster plans to give you an expected end the caveat is have your expected end in mind what do you want God to do for you where do you want God to take you what is that vision on your life and watch it unfold because everything that you're going through works together for your good what the enemy means for harm god turns it into your good we see this from the story of joseph joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers his brother thought that that was the end of joseph but in the end joseph ends up rescuing the entire country of israel he ends up gaining favor before pharaoh he ends up leading to them living in Egypt. He ends up providing food for them in the big famine that he was able to see and interpret in the dream of Pharaoh. So anything that is thrown at you, always look at it and say, what the enemy has meant for your detriment, God always turns it for your good. Look at Lazarus. I share this over and over again. When Lazarus died, it was four days until Jesus came and raised him from the dead. If Jesus had healed Lazarus when he was sick, that would have been a normal miracle because Jesus had healed so many people to that point. But Lazarus died. And when Lazarus died, what does Jesus tell Martha? This was meant to the glory of God. This had been planned to give God the glory. The bigger the battle, the bigger the glory to God. The bigger the battle, the bigger the praise that God receives. We are going to stop here for today. Before I conclude this episode, I'd like to say a prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for this wonderful word I've shared with your people. I pray that it gets cemented in our hearts. May it grow and may it yield the fruit that you want it to yield. I pray for anyone out there who feels discouraged, who needs encouragement. May you meet them at their point of need. Anyone who is sick and is watching this episode, I release the power of healing over your life in Jesus' name. I pray that God will heal you and take away your infirmity 
in Jesus' name. If you're out there and you want to receive Christ as your personal Savior, please repeat this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for sending your son Jesus to die for me on the cross. Jesus, thank you so much for taking my part and dying for me. You died and rose again for my glory. Today I confess of my sins and I ask you to come and dwell in my life. From today onwards, I am a born again Christian. The old is gone and the new has come. In Jesus' name, I do pray and believe. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. So if you've enjoyed it, please subscribe to the podcast. You can get it on Apple Podcasts and also Spotify. And if you've enjoyed the episode, please share it with someone else that is going to motivate. And I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye. His name. So let go my soul and trust in him. The waves of me still know.